Hi traders, Dr. Barry Burns here with Temp Dog Trading. Okay, uh, it is actually the evening of July 31st, getting ready for trading on August 1st, 2007. And of course, uh, a lot of attention on markets right now as they have tanked and get a lot of people asking me, hey, who could have ever expected this? What, um, what the heck's going on? Were there any signs that this was occurring? And, you know, is this the end of the world? <laughs> well, it's definitely not the end of the world. Um, and, you know, there's definitely some signs. One of the energies that I measure and most traders measure in one way or another is support resistance levels. And I call it an energy, but it's really a blockage of energy. All my trading is based on putting together a probability scenario based on energies in the market as measured by the instruments of technical indicators. So uh, I've got 10 energies all together that I look at. I measure uh, preponderance of the evidence between those 10. And when we have the majority of them all aligning, then we have a high probability scenario. Anyway, don't have time to go into all of that right now. But one of those energies is support resistance levels. And again, that's a blockage to energy, especially the first time the market approaches it or approaches it after a long time. So here's the S&P. Now this is a monthly chart. And so a lot of traders don't look at monthly charts. And that's really a mistake because it's important to understand the, the overall big structure pattern of the market, even though you maybe don't need to look at it every day, obviously. But you still need to be aware of it, have it in your mind. Um, you know, check it out once a month and see where we are. So the S&P monthly chart is what this is. And this one's just you know painfully obvious. Here's the uh, the top of the market back seven years ago. And, you know, boom, we're right there. We just plowed right into it. And we have, this is now a good time to look at a monthly chart. In fact, I always look at the monthly charts at the end of the month, which is where we are now, obviously. And so we've had a nice little um, reversal pattern off of this previous high. And, you know, it's not unpredictable after all these years that traders would look at this. People see these things and they say, huh, boy, yeah, we're coming up to that resistance. And what happens? Well, they lack in profits. And they say, I'm not really uh, too interested in holding through this because I feel uncertain as to whether the market will plow through that area. And uncertainty is a bad thing. Traders hate uncertainty. They love certainty. So when uncertainty comes into the market, then they bail. And that's what's happening here. And in fact, some traders will even short because they'll say, oh, hey, we're up against that uh, multi-year resistance. Let's short that puppy. And I'm sure there's quite a few people shorting this as well. So um, not surprising. Again, you know, we don't have a trend reversal here on the monthly at this point. Um, all it is at this juncture is market bucking up against um, very significant and obvious resistance. And remember, we're still in the third year of a presidential cycle, not making any predictions or forecasts, but that's historically a, uh, still a very bullish uh, year, the most bullish of the four, uh, generally and statistically. So we'll see. There's always exceptions to the rule, but um, that's what probabilities are all about. They're not certainties. Now, that's the S&P. That's the most obvious situation. Let's look at some of the other major markets. Okay, here's the next market. This is the NASDAQ Composite. Very different picture. Okay, on the NASDAQ Composite, here is the 2000 high from the year 2000. And as we know, we had this huge uh, parabolic move up, and then we had this big move down. Finally found a bottom after mucho pain. And now we've come back up. So where are we now? Well, obviously, see, the S&P is all the way back up to its um, 2,000 highs. The NASDAQ Composite isn't even close. So there's a lot of relative weakness in the NASDAQ market, although in recent times, it's actually had relative strength. But the big, 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 big multi-year picture is it's only back up to its 38 Fibonacci level. And that's exactly where it is, in fact. And that's the resistance level 
on the NASDAQ composite monthly chart, the 38 Fibonacci off of this high to this low. See, that's 100% retrace up here. 23, 38, 50, 62, 76. So again, this is one thing we look at in the markets. Okay, the S&P's hit a significant resistance level, but what about the other markets? Are they at resistance also? Look, do some intermarket analysis and comparison. And indeed, yes, NASDAQ at quite a significant um, retracement level here. Okay, and let's look at the Dow. There's a very different picture there, so let's look at one more market. Okay, so here's the Dow, and the Dow is a very, very, very different picture. So on the Dow, again, measuring relative strength, here is the 2000 high from the year 2000. Now remember, the NASDAQ went down and only retraced to its 38 Fibonacci level. The S&P has now retraced to its 100% Fibonacci level, which is right here. The Dow is the strongest of all of these major markets, and it has gone beyond the 100%, so it's gone higher than the 2000 high, and it now has found resistance at its 138% retracement. So this is what you want to do. Now, a lot of traders don't do this, and it's a big mistake, is um, you know they'll do their, their Fib retraces, so they'll draw it from this high to this low, and they look for, you know, 38, 50, 62, basically, and 100%, and then they're done. But what they don't look for is, um, in this case, resistance levels above the 100% retrace, and they don't have those into their software. 123.6, 138.2, 150, uh, 161.8, they don't have those, but those are levels the market does respond to. Look, here the market went right up to the 123.6, and we have our, a red month. The whole month was red. So the market did indeed respond to that level there. That's a very sorry looking arrow, but <laughs> you can see, boom, boom. Remember that? That's only one bar, but that's a whole month because these are monthly bars. And now we've gone up to the 138, and again, now we've got two red bars. And remember, look at that. Look at that last bar there. That's what I call a spike top reversal bar. You call it a shooting star, whatever you want, but that is a bearish candlestick pattern. And we've got two red bars now. Remember, the month is finished, so this bar, this last bar, has closed and will be starting a new bar. So that two bar um, pattern is done. So resistance levels on all three markets concurrently. Very different relative strengths, obviously, but still. That's what we look for. If you just come into resistance on the S&P, that has small significance. If you come into it on the S&P and the NASDAQ at the same time, that's fairly significant. But if you're coming into significant resistance on the S&P, the NASDAQ, and the Dow all at the same time, that actually is kind of a cluster of resistance. And that's why intermarket analysis is so important, even if you just trade the S&P. You really need to be looking at the other indexes as well to see are they also coming into support resistance levels because if they do, then that adds extra strength to that support or resistance level.